welcome to the fish tank. Hey everybody, Fishman here. Welcome to part two of my DIY river tank build or drop off tank build. Uh, this is the part that I'm actually really most excited about because this is what I needed the belt sander for. Uh, this is all 6061 aluminum. They're all quarter inch wall pieces. Uh, this is a two by two by a quarter inch. And those 12 pieces there, uh, eight of them are gonna be the legs and uh, four of them are gonna be cross pieces. And this is going to be a very tricky build because uh, the three tanks have to go together in such a way that and when they're all assembled, first off they have to be able to you know, go together, uh, but they also have to be all exactly the same height. Because if they're not, when I fill this tank to the top, which is going to be within a, probably a quarter inch of the, of the top, water is the perfect level. And it will show any kind of flaw and, and when you have a small flaw like that over six feet it's uh it really shows so what i have to do with each piece is what i'm doing here is i uh, took a piece of angle and I clamped it to 90 degrees to the post and each piece has to be sanded so that they have a nice square bottom and more importantly they all have to be sanded so that they are exactly the same length and by exact, I mean, you know, it's obviously this is not true machining. This is just something that I need to get within uh, a sixteenth, preferably. Uh, I'm hoping for a thirty seconds, uh, and I think it should be fairly doable. Of course, I'm cheating because I, you know, finished this whole build and I know what it looks like. Uh, now, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna just uh, these are the first four legs, and I've uh, sanded them all down, and I'm just gonna. Stack them here, and I'm going to pull up a, a piece of angle as a straight piece. And uh, that's not so bad. I think definitely within the 32nd, maybe only a 16th, who knows. Uh, what each of these still needs to be adjusted yet again, because uh, floors aren't even. So once I have this all built and assembled, like um, by the end of this uh, video, I'm gonna have at least uh, the preliminaries uh, set up so that you can see what it looks like. Uh, that all needs to be um, <laughs> unassembled and it needs to be checked for level on the floor that it's going to go on and where it's going to go. And then it all needs to be, well, I'll get a little ahead of myself. There are some other details that need to be done as well. But I'll explain those as we go along. So what I'm going to do here is these are the easy pieces to drill. Uh, these are the cross pieces. Uh, they're short and they're easy to fit in the clamp. So I use them as a template. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drill... Um, as precisely as I can uh, each hole then so I'm gonna set them up if you remember from the um, belt sander build I use a, a aluminum bar as a parallel I've obviously removed it at this point and I'm gonna what I do is I scratch out with the, uh, the marker to make sure where the one by one hole is and then we'll go drill through if you have a little bit of variation in angle here uh, you end up with uh, a hole that's going to be skewed, so I only drill through one side. And that quarter inch is not nearly enough to be an issue. So I'll drill through once, and I'll flip it over and do it again. 183 more times! <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a lot of holes in this thing. So, alright, I'm not going to show you them all, obviously. Uh, I atten initially intended on uh, showing you guys a, a C-clamp build I did for uh, bracketing things when I do machining. Uh, I've actually recorded all the footage, I just haven't put the video together. That's what that thing in the back there is. And I have machined that so that it is parallel to uh, the ways on my milling machine. And here what I'm doing is I'm testing out to see if I can drill all the way through because, you know, the, the bed of the milling machine is parallel so I wouldn't have any problem drilling all the way. But my, the travel on my drill bit is just not enough. So I have to still keep doing them one at a time. So what I'm doing here is I've uh, put a couple of pieces of, of the pre-drilled uh, cross pieces in and I've marked where that's going to go. And now what I need to do, uh, yeah, that's, that's my drawing for uh, keeping track of all the holes because there's an awful lot of holes. And then what I need to do is mark so that uh, each piece so yeah, I'm only measuring from one side, so each piece has to be uh, a certain distance from the end. So this is actually the bottom, and I am drilling that piece. But what I'm going to do now is, because I get to use the, uh, the adjustments on the mill, 
I am going to, <laughs> you'll see in a second here, just make a small adjustment and then I flip it and then mark it again because I want to be very accurate here. Fortunately, I have a lot of pieces that I can do this with. And once I have it precisely where I want it, I mean, this is obviously being way too anal for what it needs to be, but I really would like this to be as perfect as possible. And then once I get there, uh, eventually, I'll drill that hole and I'll have the marking. Now, you notice I haven't put a stop on there. Like, I'm just doing a line. Uh, it's faster. And when you have 183 holes to drill, sorry, 184 in total, uh, it takes a very long time to drill all those precisely. And I am cutting a little bit of a corner here, but I don't really think it's that much of a risk. Uh, and then you'll notice uh, in a couple clips coming up, uh, because my uh, slide is not long enough to um, uh, accommodate a very large piece, like as in uh, the longer legs, I actually end up having to use a stop for some of them anyway. So anyway, here we go. I don't know how many times I've tested that, but I think I'm finally ready. And now, once we have it templated and everything's in the right place, it's pretty speedy. There we go, one done. <laughs> one done, many to go. So I think the next clip is where we're going to have to deal with uh, adjusting for the longer, uh, the longer legs. It should be coming up shortly here anyway. And yeah, I used WD-40 to make sure we don't have any burrs and anything. Oh, no, for some reason I decided I needed to show you <laughs> the fact that this works. I don't know why. I mean, there is a 30 seconds of a gap between the, uh, the diameter of the bolt and the diameter of the, of the wall for the, the hole, so I mean, if I was off enough that that wouldn't slide through perfectly, there'd be something seriously wrong. So anyway, I decided to include this, just to show you that it does work. All right, here's the part where I have to put the template on. So I just cut a piece of, uh, of uh, plywood into an L shape, and then I can do the exact same thing as before, except now the slide's longer, and what I can do is I can adjust, because I have to measure, remember, from all from one side, so that the, if there is any small incremental differences in length, um, the piece will not uh, have any variations as far as uh, like the angle of it. I, I know it's probably a, a little too picky for uh, for the aesthetics kind of thing, because that's pretty much all it is, because these are all just where the cross piece holes go. But I wanted it to... I don't want any kind of angle showing up, and if you have an angle, it will catch your eye, and then it will seem that the, something may not be square. So if they're all as close as possible, I mean, not too many people can see the difference between a, a 16th and a 32nd, so hopefully that will all show up quite well that way. And here we go, Lego time. Uh, all I'm going to do here is pre-assemble the whole structure. Well, actually not the whole structure, I'll explain that again in a second. The, uh, the initial parts of the structure I'm going to pre-assemble. Uh, check for squareness, check for make sure all the holes are proper because there's a lot more work yet to be done on this. Uh, like I said, I couldn't show it to you all in one go because uh, this all needs to be sanded and uh, finished and then also um, there are brackets that are going to go on to uh, hold the tank in place it's kind of neat there it's hold stands up by itself <laughs> apparently it is square so yeah i need to do a whole pile more work on this but i had to make sure before i started all the finicky work that this was actually something that was going to you know go together and that's what i'm doing here i'm just sticking all the pieces together the nice thing about this though is, uh, once it actually is uh, semi-assembled, I think you might have a, a, a better uh, <laughs> you might have a better chance of picturing in your mind uh, how all the tanks are going to go together. Because I remember when I was trying to explain to the client as I was uh, doing this, uh, it is kind of something that's uh, hard to visualize. Uh, but um, the client's an artistic type person, and he actually had no difficulty whatsoever putting it all together once I drew him a, a small picture. But even still, once I showed him the actual product, <laughs> uh, when it was all finally assembled, it was, uh, yeah, it's, he sees now, I think, <laughs> the complexity of this kind of thing. It's not something you can just slap together. 
And these bolts are only being hand tightened because, for the obvious reason, as I have to take this apart numerous times. And you can't have... Well, I mean, you can tighten it down, but then you just have to use a wrench to untighten it again, and it just gets uh, really uh, tedious. And because all these uh, um, pieces are cut and uh, trimmed nice and square, they stand up perfectly well. So this is going to be pretty much the end of this build. I'm going to show you, uh, once I'm done all the legoing here, uh, the overall picture of it. But uh, in video two, what I'm going to do is uh, show you how all the brackets go on to hold the tank together, and also uh, the upright pieces that the, well, the pieces that the tank is going to rest on, where they're going to go, and then you get to see also where the gap is for the center tank because it free floats, which is kind of cool. And uh, from there, um, we have to do the sanding and everything else, of course, as well. But uh, I will show you all that in the video too. So hopefully if you like this sort of style, uh, please like and subscribe. Uh, what I'm going to do uh, here is just finish up these last two legs and then we're going to uh, pan out and I will show you what the whole structure looks like. And then that will be the end of this video and then in video three it'll be, we'll do the second part of this. There we go, last couple pieces going on. As you can tell there's a lot of cross pieces on this. And it's, uh, they're all necessary because once uh, this tank is on here, it is actually quite uh, heavy and also it needs to be held quite firmly. And that should be it. So now we'll pan out and we'll give you the overall. This is the tank and this is where the shorter of the two is going to rest. This is the gap in the middle where the uh, middle tank is going to go and this is the taller tank and they're all going to flow together. So thanks for watching, we'll see you in the next video.